I'm going to show you how I make a fuel bladder that I feed my uh, TD Cox TD-049s with. Since they're aerobatic planes, you got to have constant pressure whenever you're in any wild position in the air, and this works much better than hard tanks do. So, uh, the first thing you need is some tubing to make the fuel bladder with, and this is latex fuel tubing that I buy from Texas Timers. They've got two sizes. This is the smaller of the two. And also, you have to have one of these uh, fittings for the end of the tube that plugs into the end where the line to feed the engine goes. Um, it's best to have a few of those on hand so you can make up spare bladders, make a quick change. Um, you know, in the field if you pop one or when you get ready to go fly to put a fresh one on. You also will need some thick fuel tubing. Um, you don't have to have it, but it helps when it's time to connect up to the airplane. I uh, got, some, got some hose clamps. Uh, these are Great Plains 3 sixteenths, I believe, uh, hose clamps. Yep, no, excuse me, 3 30 seconds hose clamps, and they fit this thick fuel line tightly. So, let's get started. The first thing we have to do, take one of our end plugs and thread it into our bladder tube. Just going to wet it and start working it into the hose. It's kind of hard to get started sometimes. Once you get it in, you just have to work at it for a few minutes and gradually push it up over the barb and a little back and forth motion between the thumb and the forefinger and it'll usually eventually slide on sometimes it's more resistant than others here we go almost there Okay, give it a tug to make sure it's on straight. Looks good. So now we're going to tie it down. Uh, that's what some people use these uh, little metal, uh, these stainless steel um, tie wraps for these. They're made by Sullivan. You can get them at the hobby shop. Sullivan twist ties like that or you can make them yourself stainless steel and they work pretty good sometimes they will cut the line so usually what I do is use Dacron flying line or waxed dental floss however in this case this dental floss is not waxed so we're not going to use it so I'm just going to cut a piece of this Dacron and we'll wrap it around right at the edge of the barb and secure our tube. Put a little finger sticky on it. And for those of you who were Boy Scouts, you know how to tie a square knot. So right over left. Pull it down right at the edge of the barb. and pull it tight, not too tight. You will cut the tube if you're not careful. Get your pinkies in there and check, make sure it's still tight, and then pull it on down. And that'll usually secure it. Uh, lots of times, or usually I'll flip it over and put another knot opposite the uh, first knot because if it's going to leak, it'll usually leak right around the knot. So we flipped it over, knot's on the other side, so Left over right again. Pull it down tight. And right or left. Pull it down tight. That should do the job. Yep, seems good and tight. So we'll go ahead and snip that and although a twist tie, not a twist tie, although a zip tie will not 
seal it it's always a good idea to put one on anyway um, the zip tie alone will leak under the head of the zip tie but if you put it on there and wrap it so that the head is not oops, so that the head is not right next to the knot then it'll it'll help keep things tight there we go not not too awfully tight okay. and that should not leak so now for the little half a planes we fly you only need about an ounce of fuel so uh, that is going to fit easily into about a half inch of this tube I'll cut it a little longer than that because we still got to put the plug in the end and um, take a sharp razor blade because a dull one will botch the line up and I'm going to cut it you know, a little less than an inch there we go okay where'd my plug go I think it's hidden under the paper ah, that's my pellet There's my plug. Okay, same thing. Moisten the plug. Put it into the end. It slides in a lot easier than the other fitting did. And we'll tie that off too with another piece of Dacron. And actually, one time I forgot to put the plug in the end and it didn't leak and it didn't shoot the plug out so it will actually work without this being tied off the most critical part is that front end that we just made So there we have it. That's the basic bladder. And everything else that we're going to add to it is part of mounting it on the airplane. So there we have it. We've got it uh, with the uh, Texas Timers uh, feed fitting in the end of it. Dacron flying line backed up by a zip tie and a uh, Great Plains plug in the other end of it. So now we're going to pressure check it. I cut off a piece of this thicker fuel line, plug it right on here. And when you do a quick change on the airplane, this will be part of the fuel fittings on the plane. And you'll pull a spare one of these out of your box and just pull the old one off and plug the new one on. All right now, what we're going to need is one of these fittings that you also can get from Texas Timers. It's uh, for a lure lock syringe. That's spelled L-U-E-R dash L-O-C or L-O-K, I forget which. Uh, and it screws on right where the needle on these syringes screws off. And use a bigger fueling syringe that's already got one on it. So we're gonna pump this up and dunk it in my measuring cup full of water and make sure that it does not leak. Hold it so it doesn't shoot it across the room. And hopefully it won't explode. Get my plastic hemostats and clip it. And now we're gonna dunk it down in the water and look for any air bubbles. No bubbles, don't know if you can see that, but it's holding air and if there was a little bit of leakage of air that doesn't necessarily mean it'll leak fuel because the fuel's a lot thicker with the oil in it and uh, uh, air leaks much easier but in any case I don't like to see bubbles so dry it off and there we have the bladder ready to go on the plane now um, 
this fitting, as you saw, didn't leak uh, with where the thick fuel line goes on it, but uh, just for security's sake, I'm going to put one of these uh, little uh, Great Plains hose clamps on it. And if you don't have one, you can tie a little bit of line or even a zip tie around that area. If I can squeeze it open, slide it on. And I'll put its protrusion in the same place as the zip tie's protrusion. So that's just extra security. That'll hold it on. And it also m might be good to make a standoff so that this doesn't rub against the fuselage. Um, the next step will be to hook it to the airplane. So next thing you do uh, is add your fuel filter. And then this will be the line that connects to the engine. And uh, there are several different ways to mount all of this to the plane. Now we need to make a container for the bladder. I used this mesh cloth. It was just part of a bag that came in a tool kit. It makes a great container. All I do is roll it over, estimate the size that will contain the bladder without constricting it. You want to make sure that there's no uh, uh, false pressure on the outside of the bladder. And give it plenty of room to expand because uh, any false pressure will cause the mixture to be wrong when you launch and then that will cause it to lean out in mid-flight. So um, fold it so that it makes an appropriate size tube, cut it off, run a bead of epoxy down the edge and let it harden. And I do it on paper like this so that when the epoxy hardens I can just cut it off and it leaves a nice uh, hard strip that you can use to help align the bladder when you mount it on the plane. So here's what it looks like when it's mounted on the plane. And I uh, uh, zip tie the fuel filter to the fuselage and then slip the mesh tube over it and you can use this little clamp to help hold it in place and just poke it through some of the holes and I also sew a zip tie through it and tighten it down and you can tighten it down. If you don't have one of these clamps you can use that zip tie that holds the bag on to also help put some pressure on the edge of the fuel tube uh, and uh, I use these hooks that hope we can see that I use these hooks that were originally for the metal fuel tank and they make a good uh, bladder holder it helps secure the bladder there so uh, for the uh, rear of the bladder I just use a piece of Dacron string and secure it to the fuselage and uh, that holds it all in place is you can I don't know if you can see this or not but the bladder is sitting inside of there and it's only that long when I fill it up with fuel if I put a half an ounce in it it gets about that long it'll hold another ounce so you can see you don't have to make a cloth uh, bag quite as large as this one depending on the size of your plane you might want to make a smaller one so anyway uh, that's how we make the bladder and install it on the plane. For my next video I will show you how to crank this engine up with the bladder on it and um, so I hope that's a help and stay tuned for the next cranking and running video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.